Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly online event. We cover NLC activities, um, library topics of interest to Nebraska librarians, um, anything you may be interested in as a librarian in the state. Um, we have our Library Commission staff that do these presentations, and we have guest speakers sometimes, like we have as we have today. Uh, we do these sessions every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. They are free one-hour sessions on average, um, and we do record them. So if you're not able to attend a live one, you can always want, listen to our recordings. Um, this morning, we have a presentation on Teen Read Week, which is actually coming up next week. Week after that? Next week, yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll hear all about that. So, I'll pass it on over to Sarah. You can introduce yourself, who you are, what you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Sarah Dale Pearsall, and I work here in Lincoln for Lincoln City Libraries at Gear Branch. Um, and I am, I, the one at Gear who works with the teens. When we first started talking about doing this, we were going to do it all about Teen Read Week and what everybody has planned to do for Teen Read Week. And then as it progressed, we started talking about, well, how about some background information on how you developed your teen program in the first place. So I sort of dug back into the files here and put together um, some information for you if you're interested on how Lincoln City Libraries put together our teen program uh, to begin with. This got started a couple of years ago. Uh, Susan Steider, who's our young adult librarian over at Isley Branch, and then Pat Leach, who at the time was uh, the director of youth services, who is now the director, um, and also Greg Michaels, uh, put together all of the people from all of the branches that work with teens. And we started talking about the Lincoln City Library's teen experience and what it was exactly that we wanted to do with the teens, how we wanted to make it happen system-wide and what we wanted them to get out of it. So what I'm sharing with you is just some sort of internal memos and things that we had put together at the time. Um, we have we have since ceased doing these meetings and have kind of gone out on our own in terms of um, what everybody's doing. But this is kind of how we got started. Um, MySpace, at the time that we started doing these meetings, was sort of the big hot thing. Mm -hmm. And so what we wanted to capitalize on was what, obviously, the kids were thinking about. The teen experience, make it your space, make the library your space, was the thought that we had. And we wanted to make it very much a collaborative thing between the libraries and the teens. Uh, we wanted the teens to tell us what they wanted from the library. And to make that happen, one of the things we did was put... Um, surveys up onto the website and had the teens uh, tell us the things that they were interested in doing. <clears throat> and from that and then from our meetings as well, we put together some lists of, of background stuff, the principles, what we wanted to do, and then sort of our action plan in terms of what we wanted to make happen. So this is, this is from the notes that got us started. This is the principles that we came up with. Um, we wanted to make sure that the, the Libraries were really embracing an active role. We wanted to say, we have something to offer to the teens, and we are actively going to go forth and do that with the, not just the little kids, but also the teens. Um, nurturing teens' development into happy and productive adulthood. Yes, we want them all to grow up and be happy and productive. That's definitely something that we want to have happen. Advocating for teens in our community. Um, Advocacy is something that is particularly important to us at Lincoln City Libraries. We are um, we are very much pro-teen, and we want the, the teens in Lincoln to have a voice, and we want to be able to help provide that voice with them and for them, and to make sure that they know how what their rights are and how to speak out and what to say and what to do, you know, how, how to how to become productive in the community. So that's definitely something that's very important to us. Uh, responding to the diversity of the teen experience in Lincoln, we've got all different kinds of people in the city of Lincoln. Throughout the state of Nebraska, it's obviously the same. We feel that it's important to work with the kids from their perspective and share their perspective with the rest of the city. So we want to look at the diversity that we have and go with it. Uh, supporting and encouraging teens to succeed at school kind of a no-brainer. We want to work, you know, hand-in-hand -hand with Lincoln Public Schools and with all of the private schools here in town 
and make sure that the kids are getting the tools and the encouragement that they need to do well. Uh, recognizing and celebrating teens' talents, skills, and achievements, we want to make sure that the kids have outlets for the things that they are really brilliant at. And that's really a fun one. I mean, to, to sit down with the kids and to learn um, the things that they're into and the things that they're excited about. Um, you know, I, I have learned in the past couple of years from my teens a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have begun to know about from filmmaking to parkour to uh, stuff online. I, they're a fabulous source of, uh, uh, of, of skill and talent and, and learning about what they do and then providing them for outlets to do that is, is a lot of fun. Motivating teens through engagement, fun, and relevance. Yes, we want them to have fun. We want them to come to the library and have fun, and we want to get them moving. So definitely motivation is one of our, one of our principles. Uh, developing the status of destination of choice for Lincoln teens. That's kind of a big one. We've been talking about that in libraries for quite some time now. Um, and, and definitely some of the things that we have done at LCL have been with the goal in mind to make ourselves a destination. Gaming is something that we'll talk about a little bit later, and that's definitely a big, um, again, some other sort of regular events that we have for teens um, at the libraries to make it so that the library is, you know, not just a place to go for to get the books and to get the stuff for your report and whatnot, but to go and hang out. Uh, using popular culture as a connector between teens and libraries. Everybody has jumped on that particular bandwagon, which, mm -hmm. yay. Um, yes, we have a MySpace. Yes, we have a Facebook and um, Twitter and all of the rest of the things that enable us to talk to the kids from where they're at. And it works well. Uh, Facebook in particular is sort of the big thing right now. MySpace has faded slightly, although it's still still big with a lot of the kids. And, and we do both, and we announce all of our events on both. And I definitely have kids coming in and saying, you know, Facebook said you were going to be here doing this and this and this, and, and responding to that. So, you know, it really does work. Uh, relying on relationships with youth, getting to know the kids, it's huge. You need to get to know your kids. And I'm willing to bet that most of you who are listening to this are doing that, and it works, and it's a good thing. Seeking youth input and planning. They definitely need to have the ownership over what they're doing at the library, and they have fabulous ideas, so we'll talk about different ways to get that input and make it happen. And then joining with others to maximize or streamline the team experiences. We want to do things that are in line with the kids' families, with what they're doing at school, with what's going on in town. We want to make sure that we are in touch with what else is going on in the city and how we can make that happen and how we can make it bigger and better. So that's the principles that we put this all together on. That's a little bit lofty, I'm sure, but that's where we started from, and we'll see how well we have accomplished some of those things. Here's the action plan, creating these opportunities for the teens to participate, and we really did focus on these activities that they could do and different um, aspects of what we thought that the teens and the library would come together on. So, of course, literature, of course, book groups, readers, theaters, podcasts of book reviews. Um, we do podcasts of all of our book talks, and the teens participate in those. Uh, we have book groups that meet in-house, of course, and we do actually have online book clubs as well. Gear has an online book club um, on shelfari.com that has been fairly successful, and we've been pleased with that. Uh, art, visual arts, that's a, a big thing with us. We, we love to have visual art on display at the libraries, and we have collaborated with elementary schools, with high schools, um, with uh, private groups around town that um, have been able to provide us with art shows within the libraries. Uh, music, definitely we have live music at the, at the library when it's possible. We've had some really amazing rock and roll shows. We've had some... Uh, drum shows that have been fabulous, stuff like that. Um, we're actually planning uh, an event right now. It's very much in the planning stages, but we're, we're working on a zombie prom 
that is going. Oh, it's a good job that I'm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a thank you for our teen volunteers for um, probably sometime in January or February. And we're working on whether or not we're going to have live music or recorded music for that event. So that's definitely a big deal. Workshops, whenever we can manage it. Um, we've done writing workshops. We're working on some photography workshops that are coming up. Performances, obviously, video productions. Um, the big video production that the gear teens have been in on is the adventures of Library Girl and Volunteer Boy. I saw that on the <laughs> website, yes. Very Which cool. <laughs> we've had two years running. We've had the adventures and now the continuing adventures. Uh, the third script is in process and it is going to involve both animation and be at least in part a musical. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we're kind of learning how to write music for that one, which is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, popular culture gaming. We have gaming events uh, at all of our branches on a regular basis. Gear does a Teen Tuesday that meets every other week. Um, we, we've continued to expand with the games that we have. We've got, of course, Mario Kart, Dance Dance Revolution. Um, we just got all of the equipment to put together rock bands, so now we can do rock band in there. And now that LCL is offering Wii games um, to check out, the kids can go and say, well, I don't want to play Rock Band today at Teen Tuesday. Let's go see what's on the shelf, and we'll pull out. So yesterday we did Naruto, I don't know, beats the heck out of Naruto's friend or whatever. <laughs> anyway, it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see, chess uh, is, is a big draw at gear. We have lots of, uh, we have Jim Wallet now luckily at gear, and so he's able to put together a bunch of chess programs for us, and we have both... The regulars sit down and play at the board chess, and we have done living chess games, oh. which are a lot of fun, too. I saw that's your event that you're doing for the National Gaming Day. Yes. Is it November? I saw that on the website, yeah. yes. <laughs> that, that is, even if you don't play, come and watch, because <laughs> it's fun. They have costumes and everything. It's really a hoot. Um, fashion is something that we have tried to incorporate in. We had a really successful program where we did fashion, a fashion show with um, how to dress for going to a job interview and then had an HR director come in and speak on what to anticipate in job interviews and stuff like that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, crafts, knitting, duct tape creations, anything you do with duct tape, people are going to flock to. That's, <laughs> that's big fun right there. Beading, different crafts that we do. Um, and we do get really good turnout for those programs. Uh, the world of work, volunteer opportunities. The volunteer program works hand in hand with everything that we do with the teens. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. To, to make your volunteer program part and parcel of what you're doing with your programming and to use those kids as audience and as input and as help for all of your programs. It works well together. Internships, we've had Summer interns the last two summers with the grant from the National Library Commission, mm -hmm. or excuse me, Nebraska Library Commission, and um, and those have worked out quite well. Um, several of, I think we're up to either four or five of the teens from my teen advisory board have either become interns and or employees of the library now. So that's definitely something that, that gets put together as well. Um, advisory, uh, acting as library advocates, problem solving within the library, that's been a huge thing to get the kids input on the way the library runs and the way it's set up and the ways we can make it better and ways we can make it more um, friendly to them and make it more useful to them. Um, consulting regarding programs and spaces. I've got a giant overhaul going on right now for the teen zone at GEAR and my teen advisory board has been invaluable in helping me to plan that and put that all together. Creating spaces for teens, again, we've got the teen zones that we have really experimented with and done neat things with at the various branches and online spaces as well that we have created for the teens. Um, ample and relevant materials to check out. And ensuring that in-house in that our staff are responding to the needs of the teens, that we don't run into that block that you hear the horror stories about, we're, we're afraid of the teens, oh, the teens yeah. have overrun the library. You know, we don't want that. Lincoln City Libraries does not want that. We want to embrace the teens and to give them the same excellent service that we give to everybody else. So there has been, you know, staff training in terms of that. For a public library, I think whoever comes through your door, they're your your customers. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No matter the age you, or what. You need mm -hmm. to serve them. Figure <laughs> out what they want. Exactly. Um, 
since we put that all together in, it, in its wonderful and lofty language, um, <laughs> these are the things that I have learned in working with my kids at Gear. The big is ask them what they want. Um, teen advisory board, almost all of our locations have teen advisory boards now. I think um, Walt is working with a game council rather than a board. Um, the teens themselves in most instances dictate what it is that we need to do at the various branches. Who your teens are that come into your library are going to be the ones that say these are the things that we want and that's the way it ought to be. We draw from the kids who either come in and start out as summer reading volunteers, um, those who are uber present, the, the theory that if you hang around long enough we will put you to work uh, and, and we have done that on a regular basis. Um, here's just sort of an example of Gears Teen Advisory Board. This is sort of the things that I just put together this year's schedule. We run it on a, on a school year schedule we go from fall through spring. The last thing they do in the late spring is to help me train the summer reading volunteers for summer. And then we take a break during summer reading so that they're not doing meetings. We're doing the regular summer events and they're helping out with those things. But So a year's schedule, a couple of kid inspired events. So the things that they want to do, which usually involves games and parties and food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> A couple of sort of staff and administration inspired events, things that um, are going to be helpful for everybody. Um, the parent tea, that's something that we have done in the past where we invite all of the Tab Kids parents to come in and everybody dresses up and the kids serve their parents and it's very fancy and lovely. Um, the All Ages We Fest is something that we've got cooking right now. We've got some new gaming equipment that's going to be coming into the library and we are going to use both our teen volunteers and our adult volunteers uh, within the library to have sort of a, this is how everybody can use the Wii games and have everybody working together. So an intergenerational kind of event. A um, couple of sort of help out the whole system events. We do, like I said, they help me out with the training for the new summer volunteers every year, which is a huge deal of year. Um, paperback processing, every summer we get a big influx of new young adults paperbacks and Susan Steider had the brainstorm several years ago that our teen advisory boards should be the ones picking those titles. Sure. And they so, know what they want to read. Yeah. Exactly. So every year we get them all together at one of the Barnes and Nobles and they go through and pick out all of the titles that they want to see. We collaborate on that list, put it all together, get those all ordered. Once they get ordered and come in, then the tabs meet again and process all of them. So they put all the stickers on them and all the bells and whistles and they save the staff the the um, trouble of having to do that huge giant influx of paperbacks. Plus, then they get first crack at those paperbacks. When they, ah. <laughs> and they can check them out before anybody else can. So that one has been a lot of fun and the kids really enjoy that one. And then a couple of sort of worky things. Uh, sometimes we have a big weed list that needs to be done or shelving or we cleaned out the craft storage area one year, you know, just different things that, that need to be done and, and benefit by a giant group of lots of energetic kids working on it all at once. Um, some of the really great successes that we've had, that fashion show was a big draw. Um, of course, The Adventures of Library Girl and Volunteer Boy. If you haven't watched the movie, please go to LincolnLibraries.org and click on the team page, and we'll look at that here in a little bit. Um, you can watch both of those movies, uh, and like I said, there will be a third one coming out in the spring. Uh, the Living Chess Games, again, we've got another one of those coming up during uh, Gaming Week, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, duct tape, anything with duct tape. It's, it's huge. It's a big deal. It's a lot of fun. My daughter's still, can I come in and play with the duct tape? Yes, yes, you can come in and play with the duct tape. And they have different colors of that now, too. Oh, my goodness. I went to the bank today, and I had all of my change and all of my stuff that I had to do in two different beautiful duct tape creations that my daughter had made for me. I was very proud to show off my duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> the Facebook and the MySpace have been big hits, obviously. We get a lot of traffic on those. We have. I looked at our numbers the other day. Our MySpace, we have 374 friends on our MySpace and 313 on our Facebook. That's just on the teen ones. Yeah. And we have um, a separate Facebook for the adult as well. So that's just the teen one. So yay on that. Those have been good. Um, keep an eye out for what the people, what the kids take to that Shelfari book group. Um, that started out as our summer book club from two summers ago. And they didn't want to disband. 
And so rather than try to schedule in-house meetings throughout the school year, we just moved it online. Um, we try to do with a title a month and we read it and discuss, and we try to come up with books that have some sort of fun tie in, whether it's a movie or, um, the, we did was it this fall, early winter, when um, To Kill a Mockingbird came to the lead center. We all read To Kill a Mockingbird, and then we were able to organize a group to meet at the lead center and watch that show, which was an amazing and fun and wonderful thing to get to do. Oh, yeah, see it live that way. Mm -hmm. um, this tomorrow Pierce visit that's coming up um, at the end of the month in October, we are all reading the Trickster book, and we are going to... Uh, have as many people as can make it meet up at uh, the Omaha Community Playhouse and go to that author visit, so we're all excited about that. Um, we did uh, Pride and Prejudice with Zombies and watched a zombie movie last month, too. That was kind of fun. <laughs> um, adapt. Adapt to your branch and to your population of kids. That's huge. Every branch in Lincoln is different, and we all have very different populations of kids that frequent the library. And what works for Gear does not necessarily work for Isley or Walt or South Branch. It just works. That's the way it pans out. So don't try to cookie cutter what somebody across town is doing. Um, some of the branches have had the success using those games as rewards. Others we do more organized events. Um, others do it as a draw. And Encouraging busy teens to view the library as a destination. This is something that um, our teens at Gear are particularly, um, they tend to be very overscheduled. Mm -hmm. They tend to show up with parents or only to events that are very well organized ahead of time and, and advertised ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are going to attempt to do with our new teen zone that was in the process is to encourage the teens who, when their parents come to the library in the evenings, um, hey, do you want to go? Mm, you know, meh. Not really. What we are going to do with our generous grant from the commission and some additional monies from the library is we are going to put gaming not in a separate room that is 800 yards away from the collection. Mm -hmm. We are going to put gaming in the stacks. We are ordering a piece of equipment that is very cool, <laughs> and it's on wheels, and it has space for four big screen TVs um, so that you could actually have four different things going on at the same time. It's got locked cabinetry below for your equipment, mm -hmm. and it's compact enough that we will be able to place it in our teen zone. And then with the use of wireless headsets, so they're not making an outrageous amount of noise, <laughs> they will be able to play Wii games right there in the stacks, mm. wow. surrounded by the collection of mm -hmm. young adult paperbacks and mm -hmm. graphic novels and magazines. And we are incredibly excited about it. So and when they're waiting their turn, they can just say, look around to the, next to them and say, hey, look at this book on the shelf. Let's see. A Instead of just off in a meeting room somewhere. Exactly. And when <laughs> mom and dad say, do you want to come with? We're going to go. And instead of the kids going, you guys are going to stand there for an hour in front of the new books display and never figure out what you want. <laughs> And no, thank you, we don't want to go with you. They're going to say, hey, yeah, while you guys are goofing around in the adult section, we can go play mm -hmm. Wii games. So we are very excited about that project and hope to get it completely in and accomplished. Well, I was hoping for last summer, but maybe <laughs> next summer we'll get it all done. But it's in the process. It's um, in the works. Um, let's see. Grants, we talked about that just a little bit. And... Um, we, you and I were just, Christian and I were just talking about the previous program on Encompass here that was about grant writing, which if you missed it, was it last week? Yeah, so just last week the recording is up on our website. Go go, go listen to it. <laughs> and there will be an additional one coming up on what, November 12th, you November said? November 12th, yeah, we're having a follow-up session that's specifically about the continuing education, training, and library improvement grants that the commission gives out. So information and tips on that because the deadlines for those are coming up. December or something you know, after that session. Mm -hmm. 
and those are the those are the very grants that have helped us do this new teen zone project so definitely take a look at those um summer interns that's another thing that we've used the grant funding for and that has been a fabulous help to us to have those summer interns um and like Four, four, I think it's four or five of our teen advisory board kids have graduated to being either um, grants or pages, grant uh, funded interns or pages or both. So we're definitely making those transitions with those kids and it's it's a good deal. Sounds like a lot of that with the doing the summer interns and having to do the processing of the books is um, even nurturing, if, you're, if we're lucky, some mm -hmm. of the next generation of librarians. I mean, if they're actually seeing not just come to the library for fun, but how it happens behind the scenes it might definitely suck and some of their names. yes and we <laughs> hope we hope that we are impressing them and pleasing them more than we are scaring the hell out of them so we're keeping our fingers crossed on that but yeah the, the the last summer intern i had one of her big observations was i had absolutely no idea sort of how much was going on behind the scenes too, yeah so that was that was a big deal and and she's still coming back for more so. <laughs> okay uh, Teen Read Week. Now that we've gone through all of the sort of background information, we can look at what is going on for Teen Read Week, and then how do I pop over to the um, are you uh, website? website? And that it is. Should be. There we go. Yep. Okay, so this is the LincolnLibraries.org, the website. And um, actually, let's see. Before mm -hmm. we go into this, I just want to see if anyone has any um, questions about anything. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask about anything that Sarah's already talked about? Um, you can... You can raise your hand if you have a microphone. I can unmute you, or you can just type your question into the questions section. Uh, somebody's asking, what is gear? Oh, it's the, the one of the branches, yeah. Deer Branch is, is the largest one of the branches at, for Lincoln City. It's on 56th and Normal Boulevard here in town. Uh, Martha, I see it looks like you're having some connection problems, but you're back. That's good. <laughs> Nobody has any other questions at the moment? Okay. We'll go on to... Okay, so we'll just take a look at what we have scheduled for Teen Read Week. We're going to click on the Teen Cafe here. And from here, you can get to book lists. You can get to events at the library. There, We do actually have a Teen Post place, um, which has seen more activities some days than other days, um, some links to cool sites and homework help. But we'll go here to what's up at the library. And here is the business with the National Gaming Day, of course, November 14th is coming up, and Isley Scott, an event. They've got video games and board games that they're doing. Um, we're doing the chess tournament um, at Gear on that day. That's not a live chess game. That's actual so playing. That's, that's actual turn <laughs> of board. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's see. And then Teen Read Week. Okay. On Monday the 19th, we've got Ghost Hunters coming to Walt Branch that are going to talk about the instruments they use to communicate with paranormal, which should be a this lot This is of fun. A local people that you know who it is that is that they're bringing you know i did not talk to mary it's, to find out the exact group that she is um, working with but if you have questions about that definitely call mary lucknow at walt branch and she can i'm sure share with you the group and the contact information that she is for that program i'm actually kind of looking forward to that one yeah it does sound very interesting <laughs> Um, Friday the 23rd, uh, they're going to do the Scooby movie at Isley Branch, and that's a dress-up movie party. So come as your favorite Scooby character or your favorite zombie character. <laughs> uh, again, at Isley on November 5th, make a monster at the library. That's another craft program. Like I said, we have really good lots of crafts, and monster crafts should be a lot of fun. Pride and Prejudice and for Zombies book group. That's going to be sort of a one-time book discussion on Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Um, 
the Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith book. That, that's an interesting book, and there's an additional one that has come out, too, in the series. Um, Sense and Sensibility with Sea Monsters mm-hmm. is the second one in the yeah. series. And I think there's a third one coming out as well. Um, we Like mm-hmm. I said, we did that for our Shelf Fiery Book Club. The, the response that I got from my kids was, if you've read the original, then this will make a lot of sense to you. <laughs> uh let's see saturday november 21st uh we are having our movie party and that's going to be sort of a movie marathon party we're going to do crime and then some of the selections from the battle Luton horror collection walk i walked with a zombie they're they're black and white classics from the 1940s they're a lot of fun they're nice. they're sort of more suspenseful mm-hmm. than horrific and but yeah they're, they're a lot of fun and a lot of the blood and gore that they get now because <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so those are our events that we have coming up for Teen Weed Week, and they're all available for your perusal here. If you want to, let me, let's see, go over here to get involved, and here is where you can find the continuing, oh, yeah. the adventures and the continuing adventures of Library Girl and Volunteer Boy. If you're interested in taking a look at those, please be my guest. And be looking forward to part three coming out soon. But are these they put up on? Do you guys have a YouTube account? They do these put these out, post these out to, or they're just on your website? You know that was discussed, mm-hmm. and um, the feeling was that given that these are young people, mm-hmm. that we would prefer to have it a little more closed, and so we mm-hmm. limit it to posting it here on the website. So no, it is not currently on YouTube. Um, although there was much discussion <laughs> <laughs> about whether or not to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Some libraries are doing that, some aren't. Yeah, it's all a yeah, local choice of what the kids and the parents and anyone else wants exactly. to do. But awesome. Want to keep everybody safe and happy. And mm-hmm. so for this And also here. it's nice, too, there is, I can see I, I can see there that more recent one, 11 Minute, there is a time limit on how long the movie, these videos can be on YouTube, too. Oh, so yes. I, I'm, unless you have a special account, like a director account or something, 10 minutes is the max of anything you can put up in there. So if these guys did get, you can see they're getting longer, it looks like. <laughs> um, they wouldn't even be able to do that at, at, at the, even if they wanted to. Yeah, That's we had limit, yeah. two different directors for the first film and the second film. Um, the second film, the kids did completely themselves. Mm-hmm. And so the editing is a little different and uh, a little more experimental. And mm-hmm. again, this year's is going to be a little more experimental. Some of the animation they right. have planned is a little wacky so <laughs> it'll be fun to see how it turns out but yeah this the second film is completely kid generated and kid produced so we're real proud of it um i was just wondering is there anyone on the session today who has um is doing any uh teen programming in your libraries that you'd want to uh share i'm loaded with us, um, if you do, you can um, type into the questions, and I can um, unmute you if you want to. Um, any any things that you're doing at your library, any teen events, whether it's for Teen Read Week that's coming up or anything else um, that you want to share? Uh, Rochelle, okay, do you, uh, let's see, where are you on my list? Here we go. Rochelle, do you have a microphone there? You can go ahead and talk, I've unmuted you. Hearing you. Let me see. Hold on a sec here. Let me check my settings. Uh, 
Uh, go ahead, try again, Rochelle. I turned up our volume here. I can hear you breathing. Okay, I've got you turned up as loud as we can. Can you try and say hello, Rochelle? Hmm. Unfortunately, I'm just getting some static on our end. Do you have a mute or anything on your side, possibly, that you might have? Almost sort of here. Yeah, it's not coming through. Sorry. Um, speakers yeah sure does anybody else have anything that they'd like to share about what they're doing at their libraries Oh, I'm going to leave you unmuted, Rochelle, from now uh, um, and see if uh, it suddenly start coming through. Um, you could also, if it's a quickie thing, or if you could uh, type in into the questions and we can um, go ahead and try again. Say hi. Okay, oh. hello. There you are. Yes, now we hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I found the switch. <laughs> All right, well, next week we are going to actually start young adult programming at our library. We haven't had any yet. Um, our first event is on Monday after school. We're going to have gaming. We'll have board games and a Wii. And we're going to do that for sixth grade and up. And so I don't know if anyone, everyone knows, um, Rochelle is actually at Columbus Public Library, in case you're wondering. <laughs> I didn't mention oh, that. Oh, yes. Thank, thank you. <laughs> um, also, on Wednesday, we're going to be making some zombie finger puppets. And that will happen after school as well. Are you using um, actual zombie fingers? <laughs> uh, well, no, not exactly. <laughs> I'm, taking, <laughs> I'm taking this idea from uh, Gordon Wyant at Bellevue. Uh, he did this program with his teens last week. And he shared that, so I am using it. Uh, we're going to make out of felt and googly eyes, thread, yarn, um, just little finger puppets that look like zombies. And we'll have snacks. Uh, no brains, just popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and then on Friday, we're going to have our first after hours event at the library. Or we close at 5 on Fridays. I'm going to open at 5.30 for 7th graders and up to watch a movie. Nice. I like that kind of thing when you open up this. You yes. Special things for them. Absolutely. And I think you've hit on two really critical pieces right there. Number one, food. <laughs> yes. If you feed them, they will come. Everyone likes food. And number two, anything that they can do inside the library when it's closed is huge and exciting and wonderful. Our summer reading parties um, the last several years have been after hours and we do things like play tag and hide and go seek and things like scavenger hunt within the library and any opportunity for the kids to run around and be loud in the library. They with love no it. One scowl no, with no one else scowling at them. Or it's, <laughs> it's huge. It's a big ownership thing for the kids and they absolutely love it. So way to go. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have any events that they want to share? Tell us what you're doing at your libraries.
<laughs> okay, let us know if you do. Uh, you can go. I'm just going to go back to our library tour, or page tour. The, the libraries. Well, you know, if we wanted to take a look at the um, Facebook page, if any of you are thinking about doing that one, I think it can. I think it goes from here. This is our blog that we've done, and you can see that sometimes we get input and sometimes not so much. And I can log on to our Facebook page if I just does that go there. Sure, yeah. Okay. Okay. The Facebook started as uh, well, actually, we started out with the MySpace, and we just did kind of experimenting with it, and it has grown. If I can remember the login. <laughs> and I think, yeah. Here we go. So you can see um, the fact that we have 300, almost 400 friends on here makes for a really interesting wall. Um, it has been really interesting to keep track of everybody's flu symptoms over the last <laughs> couple of months because the kids definitely post those. Um, but they talk about the stuff that they're doing and they talk about school and, and it's educational to look through and see what they're saying. And it gives, you know, I, I just go through and read it periodically and kind of get an idea of what the teens are thinking about. And granted, a lot of it is sleeping in was great. Now I don't want to get out of bed. But, you know, that's that's good to know as well. And they're talking about Twilight here. And um, again, you know, it I do keep track of what the kids are doing, you know, health-wise and, and which school has 300 kids missing in a day because they've called in sick. Oh, and, wow. You know, it, yeah. it's a good thing that keeps us in touch with what the kids are experiencing during their day at school. So, um, and the MySpace is quite similar. Um, Do you get a lot of comments, like, onto the things that you also post on your, you know, coming out of your page? Um, some items more than others. I always make a point of putting, uh, you know, when our Teen Tuesday events are and when our various other events are. We've got, we've invited people to... Um, review books and post them uh, on the team page. And as well, of course, on the uh, library catalog, we have the opportunity to do that. Um, and we've got a little bit of give and take there, mostly from tab kids. Um, so mostly from the volunteers who are If we look at the to do that. profile page, you can see the things that you guys have posted out too. Mm -hmm. um, Slowly. Mm -hmm. There we go. <laughs> ah, the zombie walk. That was, was that last weekend? Yeah. Yeah, it was last weekend. Yeah. It was oh. a big hit. So, yeah. So here's the things that the team page is sending out that anyone who's friends can see and get notifications of. Um, so it's a good way to promote anything you are doing. If you put it out there, put it, as you saw on their page, put it on your team page to let them know you've got this. They may already be in Facebook. A lot of the teens aren't. Mm-hmm. And we've got the notices up to friend us on Facebook. And mm -hmm. this is one of my teen advisory board kids who she and another girl have made the um, challenge to one another that one of them is going to read, I think it's A through F in the young adult fiction this year, <laughs> and the other is going to read through Z, and, and they're going to post their um, findings on here. So we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it, is, it is quite interesting to see. Um, we get little bits and pieces of uh, here we go. There's flu hits oh, hard at five, right. 70 at six, um, and some business about the Tamora Pierce here. So it's a really good opportunity to talk to the kids in a place where they're looking, mm -hmm. and it's it's quite useful. And a lot, some libraries I know have had the concern of we're 
what we do we really want to push ourselves onto them in their own place you know is this a horrible thing or are they going to like have a backlash against us and it's not really what it's about you do not go out and find your kids and friend them you just let them know that you have a page and have them come and find you some you know they may have different attitudes about it some of them just wanted to be a thing with them and their friends and that's fine um they can do that but if they just know that you're there and one of their friends sees it they're all going to start seeing it and coming to your page. You know, I know some, I've heard other librarians have that concern that you know, more so with MySpace because it was generally thought of as more teen oriented. Facebook was not originally. And should we be there? Should we even be posing on what's their private little area or what they think might be their area? It's like, no, you're not. Just put yourself in there, create a page and wait and see what happens. Absolutely. Put it where they're already coming on their on your website. Um, if they come to the events, just let them know. By the way, don't you know we're, we got a Facebook. Come and find us, mm -hmm. and they will. And the ones that want to will. The ones that don't, well, it's okay. And they absolutely have a hundred percent control over whether exactly. they friend you, and yeah. and even they can continue to friend you and hide your posts. This is true. If, <laughs> if they want to do that, they're tired of listening to you mm -hmm. for a little while. They can hide you and come back to you later. But that yeah. is a nice. A feature of Facebook, yes. If someone gets too chatty or <laughs> you decide, you know, I don't want to be mean and not friend you, but I, no, I don't want to know about your boyfriend troubles. And <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You can definitely hide things on there. So, yeah, it, it, it has worked out well. We have gotten nothing but positive feedback from the kids mm -hmm. in terms of the Facebook page. And we really do just get a lot of people that get their news from the site. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got stuff going on, putting it out there for them to where they can pick it up. It's it's quite useful and it works well. Yeah, I get a lot of my information about what a lot of libraries in Nebraska are doing from if they have a Facebook page um, and also Twitter accounts. Mm -hmm. I follow Twitter and I, I've seen, mm -hmm. I've gotten, you know, learned about a lot of cool things going on by just paying attention to both of those things that just get pushed right out to my Facebook page. Exactly. We've gotten to the point where it, it's nice to have sort of home delivery of the information that you yeah. that you choose. And this is one of the great opportunities to do that. So mm -hmm. definitely would encourage it. If you haven't done it already, take a look at if you just um, mm -hmm. go on to Facebook and um, search libraries. You mm -hmm. can get oh, yeah, you'll find lots. opportunities yeah. to look at other people's um, pages and what they've done with them. So. And actually, now I think about it, that is another um, session at Encompass Live that we did in the past as well earlier this year. Um, Susan Franklin from Hastings College did a session on setting up Facebook for libraries. Oh. Um, so that's another recording that you can go to and listen to and watch if you want to to learn more about it. Um, we're contemplating doing a, a updated version of that too. Facebook is always changing. Yes. Um, and maybe like a um, advanced version, I suppose. Here's mm -hmm. mainly an introduction of why you'd want to do this, what it's all about, what you got to think about when you're thinking about getting out there. Um, so take check out that, look for the Facebook session from uh, previous Encompass Live. Mm -hmm. And when it, you can put sort of mini groups together on your Facebook page mm -hmm. as well. And it's like my teen advisory board has its own um, specific group that's uh, available to them. That way I can send out sort of broadcast mails mm -hmm. just to those people. And right. It's quite useful that way. And they can communicate just amongst their own little groups. Exactly. And so anything that's private to my tab gets done mm -hmm. that way. So, Which we can't look at here. But <laughs> because it's <laughs> private to my tab. <laughs> that's fine. So, uh, any other questions you may have about, uh, volunteers for programs? Uh, Rochelle does have a question. Where do you find volunteers for the programs, Rochelle is asking. I definitely draw on my teen advisory board um, when I need help with specific programs. That's the first place I go to. Um, I have, <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I actually have sort of a, an auxiliary group as mm -hmm. well now that the tab is kind of full mm -hmm. and um, we've got about one more school year before we lose about half of our people to graduation ah. and so I've got a group of younger kids that have been summer reading volunteers and who are very interested in becoming tab volunteers but aren't quite there yet so that's sort of my secondary gr mm -hmm. group of kids that I that I draw from but yeah it's it, we can move in when the other ones are ready. exactly <laughs> exactly they're, they're my my younger group um, but it, one of the things that I do at GEAR with volunteers, the, the primary source of sort of regular volunteering that I get from high school kids during the school year is kids doing their government and politics hours. I do allow those kids during the, their 20 hours that they have to do 
you to help with events as part of their volunteer time. So they, if they want to come in and help set up and tear down for Teen Tuesday, they can do that. Um, but I don't shut it off to other kids who just want to volunteer for the heck of it. So they come in and train at the same time that my government politics kids come in and train. And then those kids we refer to as either youth volunteers or long-term teen volunteers. And those are the kids that come in after school and maybe do homework for an hour and then put away books for half an hour. Mm -hmm. Those are the kids who are regulars at the Teen Tuesday and who I can say, hey, I've got this special thing coming up and I really need some extra help on. Do you think you can make it? And so, and, and again, that's kind of the, the show up and if you hang around long enough, we'll put you to work sort of concept. Those are, that's one of the places where I get, where I get those teens. But summer is a big draw. Mm -hmm. um, I have usually in the neighborhood of 100 to 125 volunteers during the summer and that's wow. my middle schoolers for this for the summer reading program mm -hmm. and i i do kind of cherry pick from that group and say you know be be sure to be in touch with me be sure to be you know friend the team page and be sure to give me your email and, and make sure that you know i can find you if, if i need to call on you and, and usually they're like yay this is good <laughs> we can do this you know yeah. um rochelle i'm gonna unmute you again um how have you been um, you, you were asking about getting volunteers. How did you guys get started with doing your program? Did you have the teens come to you? Did you reach out to them? How, how have you been working with that? Actually, this this programming is the very first programming I'll be doing for teens. Mm -hmm. um, the, the contact I've had with teens so far has just been after school, the ones who come in after school. So mm -hmm. um, this is, we're building from the ground up here. Do you use volunteers during your summer reading program at all? I, I plan to, I just don't know where I'm going to get them yet. <laughs> okay, that, that's been a huge resource for us. So if, if I were you and you're getting started, start talking about that now. Start talking about having them sign up to, be, um, to help facilitate your summer reading program. Um, at GEAR, we have, we're staffed at all times with volunteers. We have two kids on the desk every hour of every day of June and July. And those are the kids that um, accept the little ones when they come up with their with their program stuff and they give them the stickers and the stamps and the encouragement and all of that. Um, they love it. The teens absolutely love being the ones to interact with the little kids. Mm -hmm. It's a huge thing for them and it's responsible for them to come in, you know, whatever, an hour a week or two hours a week. And then there's a big party at the end of summer, which, you know, who can not love that? It's nice, the timing, Rochelle, that you're get starting now and this fall with getting the teens involved in stuff, that it's a good time to start grooming them for upcoming stuff, the summer reading program next summer. Um, you have a lot of time to get them involved, interested in it, understanding what it is, maybe even coming up with their own ideas between now and then of how they could help do things or what kind of events and stuff you could do for the younger kids. Um, mm -hmm. A good jump ahead for that kind of thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions or anything they want to share? anyone has a microphone, we can unmute you. If you don't, you can type into our questions section. <laughs> yes, Michelle is furiously scribbling notes. Yes. The session is being recorded, so you will be able to um, listen to it again, and the PowerPoint presentation will be available for you to look at as well. Um, there's a lot of information on those slides, so um, you'll be able to see that as well um, afterwards. Oh, Lars is very helpful. Thank you. Cool. Anything else you want to share? We're kind of getting close to the end of our hour. No, thank you for listening to me. Yes. It's, it's been <laughs> lovely. And um, I hope you get some use out of the PowerPoint presentation online. And anybody's welcome to give your a call. Our contact information is all on the website there. And I'm happy to answer questions. Or, you know, I'm certainly no expert. I'm not the professional librarian here. I am the LA Free in charge of the teen experience at Gear, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I scramble through and we have a good time and so I'm, I'm
happy to share. Great. Uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sarah. It's very cool, very interesting. Um, a lot of good help and ideas, and I hope a lot, I hope everybody has really fun Teen Read Week coming up. It's always a, a good way to interact with the kids, <laughs> um, especially in the fall. So um, thank you very much for attending. Um, we'll wrap this up now. We're about to, at our end of our hour, as I said. Um, next week, next Wednesday, our topic for Encompass Live will be trustee tips. Richard Miller from Library Development here at the Library Commission will be talking about how to deal with your trustees and things you can do for them and with them um, at your library. So hopefully you will join us for that. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.